Great. So welcome to this webinar of Delivering Excellence. And before I could start, there has been a question on resilience, which again is a big, big topic. I talk, walk, dream, eat, sing, dance, resilience. So absolutely okay to speak on that also. We need a lot of extra time uh, the session. I'll do that, my promise. Quickly, in a few seconds, it may be as simple as a person's or an organization's capability or ability to bounce back after a disaster, of course, obviously. And there's a lot to attain that. What I've been saying now in recent days now is that this definition has little flaw. I have been using this, but I see little flaw. When I say flaw, actually it is for the purpose of improvement that we need to be resilient, not after a disaster only. We need to be resilient during BAU also, business as usual. Again, resilience will mean a lot, but in recent times, I have been saying that we need to be customer-friendly, customer-caring company if we mean to be a resilient company. Any company, that does not take care of customers, its customers, and customers are internal employees, for example, and external both. So I'm talking of both customers, both types of customers. Any company that doesn't take care of its customers is not resilient, according to me. Whatever it might have done in the name of risk, crisis, business, quality, etc. And then coming back to the topic for today, excellence, according to me, once again, is part of resilience. If we are not excellent in our delivery, in our working, then we are not resilient, whatever we might have done in the name of risk, crisis, IT, disaster recovery, information security, business economy, et cetera. So the seed, seed seeds of these discussions, and later on I'll talk about the course, I need to introduce the course, was sown based on the request from EY. That's very important point in these discussions. Quickly about myself, about four decades in industry, about two decades in resilience domain, 14,000 hours in training, teaching. I've gone across companies, countries, industries in different roles. I have been a practitioner. I have dirtied my hands myself and then trainer, consultant, auditor, assessor, speaker, author, etc. I've published five books so far in resilience domain. Expecting two more. When I say expecting, I can change the word guaranteed. Dates are finalized for global release, 29th of September and 27th of November. Two more books will come out. But I was just saying before we formally started talking on this webinar that learning sharing is forever. No one is perfect in this world. I'm a lifelong learner myself. And within first few minutes, I've picked up something which I'm going to be talking to Vishal, Vishal later on. So creating pictures through AI. I won multiple awards nationally, globally on this journey. And recently, I have taken CPD membership, which adds a lot of value to my trainings and training courses. Agenda. Quick look at current global scenario, introduction to delivering excellence concept, a solution called certified delivering excellence specialist course that I've developed. Quick look at two sessions of the course and it will be quick look. Do an exercise, play a game, walk away with no regret takeaways and there are many. And I'll be happy if you have any questions to answer your questions. So we see there's a lot and we have only 52 minutes left, so it's going to be very fast. Stay with me, please. First of all, I would like to take upon a question to you all. What is your current understanding of the topic delivering excellence on a scale of 1 to 10? Please answer. Either go to slido.com, enter this number there, event number, or you can scan the QR code through your phone and answer. I'm also doing myself. The QR code will take you to the website. 
one is the lowest rating, 10 is the highest. I'm just entering five more for myself. Can I have your responses, please, to this? I see there are some people in the... Waiting to join. I'm just entering them. Great. Thank you very much. Can we do this, please? Either go to slido.com and enter this event number or scan the QR code on your phone and answer this. Great. I'm happy to have those answers. Someone saying eight, nine, five is become, becoming big. So perhaps there are multiple <clears throat> responses on five. Few more seconds and we'll move on. Thank you very much for this word. There's a, an article from McKinsey called Six CEO Priorities for 2023. So when I said a quick look at the global scenario, this is what is in the reference. Energy prices are going up. Inflation is going up. Consumer buying behaviors have changed. All this is happening in the world, according to this McKinsey report. Digital channels have gone up in number and CEOs are in a place they had never been before. Top priorities for CEOs, CEOs are saying this, build resilience. So our discussions by chance from a question by a participant started with that resilience. Have courageous mindset towards change. We need to be courageous. Focus on technology or dependency on technology is going to increase. And due to that reason, the chances of technology failure are also going to increase and hence the value in building resilience. Build new businesses also. Diversification is a BCM strategy as well. And work for net zero for environment and compete and win in talent market. This is a big challenge. We had seen that great resignation during COVID-19 pandemic period. And towards end of last year, we saw great retrenchment also. Many companies started reducing the workforce. So this challenge is going to remain with us. And then that an existing person like me, for example, 18 years ago, when I started my journey in business quantity world, I didn't know B of BCN. So there was a gap in my competencies. Three years ago, I didn't know O of operational resilience. So there was a gap. Today, I teach operational resilience, organizational resilience, etc. In between, I have learned risk, crisis, ITDR, and cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is latest towards the beginning of this year. We need to be capable of managing this challenge for ourselves. Speed is an essential skill. That's another challenge. During the period of 2020-21, Resilient companies generated shareholder returns that were 50% higher. So immediately in ROI on resilience. Resilient organizations put a lot of effort into the most value driving roles and having the best talent in those roles. So we are talking of people, taking care of people. Because with the best teams, good things happen even in, even during tougher times. CEOs are saying this. Eight in 10, 80% CEOs see new businesses as top priority, which means new skills also, not necessarily new people, but maybe new people as well. And hence that reskilling is very important. They say, get very close to the wires, which is one portion of delivering excellence on site. On selection, we walk about moving from pedigree to potential, which means getting away from the classic characteristics used to assist people based on their qualification, for example, like education or experience, and looking more at skill credentials. This is what is happening in the world. And the IBM CEO, former IBM CEO is saying, she said, at the end of the day, in this environment right now, the number one thing a company can do to build the most inclusive and productive workforce is to create a skills-first culture. 
the skills first culture is coming out in world economic forums report also one of the most important lessons i learned she continues to say that my growth and comfort could never coexist very important point once again from a ceo growth and comfort cannot coexist so we need to be into some difficult situations hard work we can say it simple words if you shut your eyes and think about when you learn the most in life it will be at a time when you put yourself at risk or found yourself in an uncertain situations so not only the ceos which means their employees also we all are also are going through testing times or interesting times and these are the best times to learn delivering excellence concept second point in agenda helps to provide exceptional and high quality products services or experiences to all interested parties in this approach the focus is not only on meeting but also exceeding customer needs and expectations we could spend day full day just on these two points because this is one of the biggest challenges in the world almost all organizations are identifying their interested parties and second point their needs and expectations sometimes it's written customer may write in rfp for example but there is a lot that is not written in the rfp but is expected so this is an art that we need to learn develop and then master i'm not still saying perfect because there is no perfect but master yes we can with practice with time continual improvement innovation and customer focused approach so that's part two of delivering excellence customer focused approach part one is delivery focus ultimately the business of business is making money so top line bottom line is important and this is how this course has been built as a combination i say the delivering excellence concept is a combination or blend of two internal which is money revenues and profits external the customer satisfaction a structured approach is needed to understand customers needs preferences and expectations and to tailor products and services to meet those requirements we have been making use of this phrase for ages one size doesn't fit all that still is true in order to deliver excellence a supportive culture needs to be developed and excellence is resilience also i said which means a culture of resilience also needs to be developed involving a strong commitment to quality investment in competence building so nothing comes free in this world delivering excellence will not come free and a spirit of collaboration and teamwork that is very important ultimate goal of delivering excellence is building long term relationships and creating a competitive advantage in the marketplace third time the make the business of business is making money delivering excellence is the habit of resilient organizations so fifth time perhaps excellence and resilience go hand in hand so delivering excellently to help your business grow there is an roi immediately direct uh, roi in delivering excellence a three days certified delivering excellence specialist course a blend of program management and service delivery taking care of both the worlds best of both worlds internal customers and external customers typical task in a program or project manager's life so quickly as i have said in the beginning also there is a lot to cover and we have only one hour in which i want to leave some time for your questions also so i have been running through these concepts but i hope these are making sense planning and scheduling managing resources reviewing project status managing communication meeting stakeholders managing team managing project finances managing changes managing quality managing risks all projects would have risks also managing project documentation hiring and firing developing team mentoring and coaching analyzing project data reporting 
and ultimately planning for further projects. As a project manager, my job is not to deliver this one, which I have in hand, deliver this one well. Towards the end of this, I should, I must start planning for the next one also. And why not a repeat business from this customer itself? And that will happen only if I deliver well, if I deliver excellently to this customer. So in current role, perhaps you are not doing program management, project management, but I'm sure all of us have done this in the past, even if we are not certified qualified PMPs, including me, myself, I'm not a certified PMP, but I have been doing project management, program management out of 38 years, perhaps 30 years easily I can put into that. So all of us, even a small, this webinar could be treated as a project by definition, start time, end time, there's, there's some outputs or deliverables. So this is one of the chapters from the course. Quick view once again on the project economics. The course covers a lot. There's a lot in the program management, project management, in delivery portion. But once again, we need to be concerned about money. Delivering well. And there are man many projects, project managers or program managers like this in the world. I have delivered. My job is over. No, your job is not over. Even if billing is to be done by someone else, invoicing is to be done by finance, for example. But your job gets over only when the time is, money is received, received in time if possible, ahead of time. Then the health of the project is well. So if you see there's a lot that I cover in the course in this just one chapter, Project Economics. Today, in this webinar, we'll quickly touch upon two, three of these. Financial evaluation of a project, including, so what is Project Economics? That's being defined here. Including the cost and benefits associated with undertaking the project. It involves analyzing various financial factors, such as investment costs, expected revenues, and profitability to determine the feasibility and potential return on investment of a project. Topic cost management within project economics. The program project manager should be capable of managing the costs related, associated with the project. Process of planning, estimating, budgeting, controlling, and analyzing costs. So in the full length course, all this would be covered. Planning, estimating, budgeting, controlling, and analyzing costs. A critical aspect of project management as it ensures. So project cost management is a critical aspect of project management as it ensures that the project is completed within the approved budget and financial resources are utilized efficiently and effectively resulting in desired profitability. So a project program manager, a person who is working on delivering excellence should not be talking of deliveries only. It's good for him or her to know about the profitability, how to calculate what does it mean how to manage costs. What are the costs associated with a project or program? So if I want to manage costs, I should know what are the components of the cost. How is the cost of a project built? So these are those in the course. Once again, we spend a little more time as of now just reading project budget, cost tracking, cost control, change management, cost reporting, risk management, and lessons learned. In the course, I talk about risk management also at length. And I've been claiming that these course now designed, developed, delivered by me with a lot new ideas in mind. I'm saying innovative. Innovation doesn't mean a big breakthrough idea, according to me. It may be small also. So my courses are full of practice, practicals now. In this three days course, we do about 30 exercises. And also with the support of case studies, multiple case studies. This course, there are about 20 sessions and there are about 20 case studies. So each session either starts or ends with a 
case study. The exercise 11 being shown here out of the uh, real force. Project manager is struggling with rising project costs. So LNT is constructing a tunnel. So case has been given to you at 10,000 feet on behalf of government of India. You have been appointed a new project manager based on your seniority, experience, and past performance in the company. So you are a star performer of the company. That's why you have been brought into this project. Within the first week, the CFO calls and tells you that the project costs are not under control while it is still to run for four more years. And that's why you have been brought in because you are a star performance performer. This is what we expect from you to control to manage the costs of this project. So how do you plan to attack this challenge? I'll wait for a few seconds. In the course, it will take minutes also. But here for a few seconds, if any ideas are coming into mind, and if someone wants to speak, we have a few seconds at least to have one or two responses. If you were the program manager, project manager for this project, constructing a tunnel at 10,000 feet and on behalf of government of India, what will you do to manage the costs? So we need to look at the components of the project cost. The one I need to understand what all is the cost. Then I'll pick up one or two or three or four, maybe all. Direct cost, there are some direct costs. There are some indirect costs or overheads. It's good to keep contingency also. Opportunity costs are cost of lost opportunity, if you want to say it that way, and sunk costs, something that you have spent and is never going to be returned. Whether you do the project or not, whether you do project well or not, whether you win the project or not. Even in applying for the project, when you submit the proposals in response to RFPs, you spend some costs, but it's not guaranteed that you will get this project. So those are kind of sunk costs. That costs quickly to go deep into this when I, I'm expecting you to control or you become the boss, you expect me to manage the cost directly attributed to the project and are typically included in the project budget. Examples are employee salaries. All right. So immediately reduce the salaries. Isn't it? Well, it possible, but we'll always have to look at the other side. So what is the risk associated with taking this action? Or labor costs, reduce labors or reduce their salaries. Reduce employees or reduce their salaries. This is one way of controlling it. Our equipment and subcontractor costs. So reduce equipment or reduce possible is the maintenance cost or breakdowns are reduced. For which maintenance, which we, we know there are different types of maintenance. There is preventive and there is corrective, for example. We need to be very good at preventive maintenance of the equipment. So this is how we are getting some ideas. Even if preventive maintenance is not my job, but as a project manager, I have an idea. By controlling that portion, I will be able to control the overall cost of my project. Indirect costs, if you look at that, are overheads, not directly tied to the project, but are necessary for the project to be completed. These include utilities, so reduce gas, electricity, water, etc. If you can, or rent, negotiate well. If you are paying rents for buildings, for example, insurance, once again, insurance costs, insurance is mandatory, and there are so many different types of insurances today. Perhaps even cyber resiliency insurance, or perhaps ransomware attack, specifically one type of insurance. And insurance doesn't come free. But you can negotiate well if you, if you, quickly once again, but all these insurances today are linked with risk, crisis, business quantity, resiliency, etc. The insurance company first will ask a question whether you have all this in place. If not, they may perhaps even refuse the insurance to you. Or if not, then they will charge a very high premium for your insurance. Contingency is cost added to the project budget to account for potential risks or unforeseen events that could impact the project. It's possible when we are dealing with labors, they may be a strike. So 
as a good program manager, you are keeping some contingency fund or budget for that type of situation as well. Opportunity costs. Associate with the potential benefits that are lost as a result of choosing one project over another. This, in the case, is a government project. And generally, government projects. Generally, it's a feeling I wish that improves. And by the way, that feeling is not from one country. That's generally all countries that govern projects may be very slow, time consuming. So the period of execution will be long. And perhaps the profitability also will be low. So it is financially not feasible, but strategically important to run to do government projects also. So you may like to calculate the cost of lost opportunity by doing this project. What have we gained? Actually, we do this in the beginning of the project or program. Sunk cost, which perhaps is the last component. Costs that have already been incurred and cannot be recovered, regardless of the outcome of the project. Sunk cost should not be considered when making decisions about whether or not to continue with the project. As I said, one example that would come to mind immediately, easily would be the cost that you would incur in preparing and submitting the proposal. The course talks about big transformations, big transformation programs. And this is how the request had come from EY when I started designing, developing this course for mega transformation projects. In those, such programs and projects, even the cost of preparing and submitting proposals would be high. Sometimes there are international mediators involved and then the costs go up again. Very important point within the costs, within the project management is estimating. So we quickly understand what do we estimate. What is estimation process of predicting or approximating the effort, time cost, or other relevant factors involves making informal judgments or calculations, informed, sorry, not informal, informed judgments or calculations based on valuable information and experience to determine the likely outcome. So as we become more experienced in project management, our calculations, our output, our estimates are better. With practice, we improve. It is important in project management because it provides foundation for effective project planning, resource allocation, a resource of all types, people, machine, equipment, budget, all. Budgeting, which is just I said, risk management, whatever we do in life, there would be some risks. There was a risk today that I wouldn't have been able to deliver this webinar, sorry. I could fall sick. There is a risk currently. The laptop may go down, connectivity may go down, the power may go down. And up to an extent, while well, there is no replacement for me, if I fall sick, no one else can deliver this webinar. But with respect to technology, I have the arrangements. There is the desktop, power backup, and connectivity backup. But risks will exist and will have to be managed. And that's why there is a dedicated chapter in the full length course. And stakeholder communication when you know the estimation. And what do we estimate? We estimate effort, time, and cost. That time may be scheduled also. Quickly, just reading this slide during the webinar, during the course, we spend sufficient time on this. There may be three types of estimations that we do in a project or program. Preliminary, detailed, and contingency. There are different techniques. Simple is guess, ask, look at the previous examples, look at the industry benchmarks or ask a vendor, for example. Use many tools also, MS Office, everyone would understand. There may be few more. There may be many more than what I have listed. Most likely you would have been using some other tools also. There are assumptions always in any piece of work that we pick up and there are some constraints. So we should be writing these 
you know, even for project estimation. It's an art accuracy when you talk of accuracy. First time I will not be so good, but with more and more calculations for while doing more projects, I will become better. It's an art and we need to learn it because it, it's an art. With practice, we master it. And we will never forget, we should never forget the GIGO principle. So there's no limit to how deep one could go. Good practices start, never give up, keep improving. Key considerations I'm, I'm talking about, documentation. So whatever I do should be on paper. When I say a document, if I wear a different hat, hat of an auditor, then anything that you have here in your mind doesn't exist for me. You tell me good stories, I'm happy with that. But my writing would be that I wouldn't see the evidence. I trust you. Whatever you tell me, I trust you. But I need to see the evidence. So documentation is important. And when I say document, at least written, reviewed, and approved. Then we can go a little more steps, adding into that, that it should be, it should be published. Once published, it should be used also. Communication is very important and that full communication cycle, when I said, I have developed my communication cycle based on something which is in ISO 22301, some of us would know is the standard for business quantity within clause seven. If you take care of my communication cycle, then generally you are compliant to clause seven of that standard. And my communication cycle goes like this. Who communicates what, to whom, when, and how. And then we need to maintain the estimate sheet also. We need to be reviewing it periodically. If required, we'll update and hence, Version maintenance also is very important. Cost benefit analysis, in short, CBA. I believe most of us would have been doing this, might have done this in the past. So in the course, we spend a little more time with an exercise. And this is one of the commitments when I said in this webinar, you will walk away with some, some articles in your hands, not only some knowledge in your brain, but some articles in your hand. I have developed a tool, a simple small Excel sheet that will be shared with you. A couple of documents as additional material, reading material, and a couple of say, case studies. So this is exercise 12 in the full course. Using case study three, there are 20 case studies I said. So this is where we are using case study three. This case study will be shared with you. And the Excel, that Excel sheet that I've talked about, Provided to play and find different values of cost benefit analysis of EYL. EYL is a fictitious company I have made in the case studies for this program. Quickly, I will open that Excel sheet for you. I hope you are still able to see it. Yes, sir. Great. And I hope it's readable. Various parameters, revenue, cost of goods and services, other expenses, any other total cost, future cash flow in one, two, three year, assume it is one, two, three year, discount rate, initial investment, it could be thousand rupees, it could be thousand dollars, we can make. So it's the formula or the tool is independent of the currency. Then we calculate gross prof profit margin, net profit, break even point whatever product or service i am selling to be at break even point i need to be selling 0.82 based on the current numbers that we have in front of us which is even less than one unit sold if you take this is training for example even if less than one training sold you will be able to have your break-even point. But one parameter, which is profitable index, with the base given calculations, even if you are making 20% gross profit margin, 18% net profit, by selling less than one unit, we are achieving the break-even, but it's not a good proposition. 
because that profitability index should be at least one to make sense. What I've shown here is in column C is plus minus, which means it's good if revenue is higher. It's good if the costs are less negative. Cash flow, higher cash flows are good. Discount rate, little less discount rate is better. Initial investment, lower investment is better. Quickly, let's attempt to play with some numbers and see what changes are happening here. Assume I say I'll be making a revenue of 1,000. Have you noticed the change from 5,500? I have made it 1,000. We see the profit goes up, but it still doesn't make any sense because the profitability index is lower than 1. Assume we keep it same. But if I reduce the cost, again, there is a change in the profits, but profitability index has not changed. If I play with the cost, total cost, assume I'm saying, actually my costs are only 200. A change in units sold has happened. I need to sell even lesser number of units, but still profitability has not changed. If I increase the cash flows, assume, yeah, this changes the profitability index. So you see, this is a very powerful, powerful tool, boil a simple Excel sheet in the hands of the project manager, program manager. And we can see by playing with different parameters, how do we make it a feasible a project that we would like to work upon. The moment profitable index becomes one or higher, then it is favorable condition. We should go ahead with this. I have done this quickly myself. During this webinar, during the course, you dirty your hands. This Excel sheet will be available with you and you will play, you will spend enough time in doing this exercise. With the help of actually, we'll link this with a case study and we'll attempt to see whether we are able to answer those questions being asked. I hope you can see my slide once again. Back to my slide. Someone say yes, no, please. Yes, sir, we can. The next topic in the course during that chapter, which is called Project Economics, is cost control and monitoring. So tracking project costs, comparing them to the project budget, and taking corrective action when and where necessary. So a quick look at the steps in cost control and monitoring. Establish a baseline. We need to know where are we starting from. And track actual costs always possible that we do less or more. Most likely we would end up spending more than what we budgeted. So tracking is important. And compare actual costs to budgeted, then analyze the variances, including the causes. Why? Even if it's increasing, that's okay, the month. But why? Because once we know the why, the root cause, then we will be able to go to the next step, which is called corrective action. Cutting costs in other areas or seeking additional funding. You can say, I need more funding. You just need to justify it. So if you go back to that example we had picked up, there is cost going up. That tunnel being built at 10,000 feet. We can immediately think of if administrative costs are to be reduced. We wouldn't recommend, most likely wouldn't recommend reducing the salaries either to contract staff or to permanent staff. Then controlling expenses, especially if there are some administrative examples, expenses. Quickly, I can give an example. I'm a member of a body, professional body, and we do have some meetings there. We need to be doing administrative meeting and we need to be delivering the technical sessions also. And we analyzed that we were meeting for the executive was meeting five times in a year just for administrative work. And we are spending a lot of money there. 
suddenly we were, or we had not thought of this. So this came as, as kind of forced to us when COVID-19 pandemic happened and we were not able to meet in person, all of a sudden, all the expenses gone. And that gave us this idea that yes, administrative costs being controlled, reduced, can have a better situation for a project or program. We need to be reporting progress also. And we have continued, by the way, in that body, we have continued even now, we are continuing with our online meetings. Slowly, there's an expectation that at least two out of five we will attempt to have physically also because there are benefits of meeting in person also. Another example of a case study case study and the exercise. The costs have started running up in the mega transformation program at EYL, fictitious company, where software development is at peak now. You are the project manager and have conducted analysis and found the reasons. Testing is consuming more than plan. Further analysis confirms that the key testers had fled to the competitor as they paid 100% jump in compensation. So how do you propose the control the project costs and if there are any risks. I'll wait for a few seconds. If someone has any addition here, a response to this question. How do you propose to control the project costs? Say within the case, software development, testing consuming a lot of money, more than planned. And the reason found that testers fled to a competitor because they paid 100%. What is your counter? Offer them 100% more and get them back. But your cost will be busted by us, will be inflated once again. But immediately, no conclusion, but an idea here would be a different idea. Would we then outsource testing portion because we save money when we outsource? Well, outsourcing has its own risks, and that's why risk management is important to be learned when we are doing project or program management. So as I said, the course is built of two components, the project and the delivery. We had a glimpse of something about the project, program management, delivery portion. We are going to quickly have a look at the service delivery portion also. A set of strategies and practices that organizations use to optimize their service delivery processes and achieve maximum efficiency in delivering high quality services. This involves a systematic approach to identify, analyze, and improve service delivery processes to ensure they are streamlined, effective, and meet the needs of the customers while minimizing waste and maximizing productivity. So immediately ideas in any project, any program. Even when we are looking at the delivery portion, the project manager could have looked into that tunnel program if there are any ways being generated and if you could control. Those are kind of low-hanging fruits or first points to act upon. The salaries will be only the second point. And a case and an exercise based on that. What steps will you take to improve service delivery in an organization? In the course, we go into breakout rooms, two or three groups work separately on this. So I make use of that facility of Zoom. Most of my trainings are delivered through Zoom. The breakout sessions are utilized very well. And then we spend time on that to do this. Here quickly, and I'll wait. Definitely this time I'm expecting some people to participate, respond, please. What we're talking about is improving service delivery. What could be done? Here are some parameters to improve service delivery. So the course is made of some games also. This is one of those games. Let's play a game. I'm assuming no one is allergic to game. The doctor has not said, do not play a game, otherwise you'll fall sick. There are two buckets. Going low is good for... The two buckets. Uh, customer complaints. Yes. Go slow. Average response time has to go low. Uh, right. Service you can, delivery. You can name you also who is responding. Okay, this is Rithik. Yes, please, Rithik. Yes. So, 
uh, average response time can go to the low end bucket mm -hmm. uh, service delivery cost uh, then uh, repeat orders right customer complaints these are the ones which will go to the low end bucket and whatever is remaining will go to the higher bucket uh, little high question bucket. i would like to say thanks Ritik. you're good but repeat orders must go up Reference oh, okay. must go. So, yeah, so, hi, uh, hi. Let me... hi, 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 hi. Right. Average response time should be as low as possible. Yes. First time so, resolution rate should be. To, uh, I come from the from the customer service industry, but the call center for us repeat is actually bad because ah, a repeat so. call means. Hold on. I'm not ah. saying repeat problem. A repeat incident. Ah. It is repeat order. That's someone who, who had outsourced their call center to you and they say next mm -hmm. year we will actually renew the contract with you. That's yes, the repeat that's order. Go ahead. Yes. And when you say the complaint, right? Mm -hmm. Repeat offenders that have to be as low as possible. I agree. Yes. Great. What about this one? Customer first time resolution rate should be up or should be high? Uh, unless sorry. First time has to go up. Maximum complaints resolved in first attempt itself. That's what it means. Yes. Right. And this rate has to be up. Very good. But overall, customer complaints should be going go down. Up. What about the last one? Uh, go up. What is net promoter score? Is a concept. It is, the, it is a measure of uh, customer satisfaction. Right. Or rather than customer satisfaction, it's a measure of customer stickiness. Right. Wherein the main question is, uh, are you going to are you going to refer our brand or our you know our uh, product to your friends and family? Thank you. So the higher you go to the ten, it's a one to ten scale, yeah. where one to six is passive. I'm sorry, one to six is de de uh, detractor, seven and eight is passive, nine and ten is uh, positive. Thank you very much. I was about to say that I could take an hour on net promoter score only. You have in less than a minute explained all this to us. So this could be the answer to the challenge that we had in hind hand, how to improve our service delivery. So 10 challenges of organizations, only 10 minutes left. So I'm going to be very fast now. Exceed expectations, drive revenue, succeed through excellence, boost profits, Elevate customer service, turn satisfied customers into advocates. This is what NPS is. Enhance revenues, unlock success, elevate your business, delight customers, increase profits, and increase the resilience. So, what is the answer to these? Solution is if you see right hand side now, about 50% of these challenges. The answer is in delivering excellence. And that's a very good news. Second question for you all. What is your renewed understanding of the topic? Delivering excellence. On a scale of 1 to 10 once again. And I request everyone to now use phones once again if you wish. Or go to slido.com. I'm doing myself. Not working for me, it seems. I hope it's working for others. It's not work for me. Your code is not working for me. May I request people? Seven is a, a response, okay. But it's only one response, it seems so far. May I request others also to do it, please? I'll wait for a few more seconds. It seems only one response so far. But this is just an attempt to make it interactive that I had been asking questions or polls, etc. And I would like to move on.
Thank you very much. So quickly talking about the course, managing large transformation deals. So these are the contents, all that goes into that. About 17 sessions, 20 sessions, sorry, and 20 exercise, exercises. Program project lifecycle management, project economics. We had spent some time during on this topic. Efficient service delivery approach and methodology. Managing change requests and scope creeps, which is part of the program management. Introduction to delivering excellence. We attempted to have a little look on this. I do talk about design thinking in reference to or with respect to delivering excellence. How do we use design thinking in delivering excellence? Quality management and continual improvement. Innovation and creativity. Building a culture of excellence. Very important. I had said earlier also. Building a culture of excellence, culture of resilience, because excellence and resilience go hand in hand. Communication is very important. We understand this during the course with the help of exercises, case study, as well as that life cycle, communication life cycle. I had said who communicates, what to whom, when and how. Managing customer complaints and feedback, very important. Whatever we do, there would be some complaints, but we should be capable of managing these and converting the complaints into opacities, maybe new product, new service, or at least an improved product or improved service. Advanced client interactions, including managing difficult conversations. Again, whatever we do, there will be some difficult times, difficult situations. How do we manage those with the customers? We learn that also. And again, with the help of our case study. And there's an assessment at the end. Passing that, you are called Certified Delivering Excellence Specialist. Key features designed, developed, delivered by award-winning certified corporate and international trainer. I have done this. I'm repeating. The seeds were sown based on the request from EY. 20 sessions, 20 case studies. World's first AI assistance course on this topic. Most likely, there is no other course in the world of now on delivering excellence. There are two games also that we play. We had a quick look at one of those. All hands-on practical because there are so many exercises, 30 plus exercises and different types of exercises, individual, group and role play. Some assignments also, tons of additional reading material as walk away. I'll share some of, just to give you a glimpse of what is in store, some of the reading material also will be shared with you. And fully working playable Excel sheet, one we had a look at, there are a couple of other Excel sheets that have develop all tools will be shared with you and all participants will get a personally signed copy of my book my experiment with organizational resilience part one and an offer that you can write a chapter a guest chapter in my next book as i said global release is fixed for 29th of september this is enough time and you can do if you wish that's an offer for me lifelong support anytime any question, but when I say anytime means write a mail, a response is a guaranteed. I have cases when people have been getting back to me, my participants, even after two years, and I never say no. The best, perhaps, I would say. In the past, we would have learned, gone back, and might have forgotten because generally we do not implement immediately. There is no scope. Or if we start implementing, then we have some roadblocks, some challenges. So I offer free. 30 minutes visit to my resilience OPD, which is my copyright concept. When you start using these concepts that we learned in the course, if you have any challenges, please come back. I'll have time for you. We'll just have to look into each other's schedule. So all that is built into this charges. The cost base fee is 30,000 INR plus GST for people from India and USD 600 for, for the rest of the world participants coming from the rest of the world. There are discounts available. Registration is required up to 10th July. No need to pay money yet. Ask me. There's a lot to be done. If you look at the dates, the course is starting on 31st of July. So two days, 31st July, 1st August, 7th, 8th August, and 14th, 15th August. So we ran a survey based on which we have designed the course this way, that three days actually are spread over three weeks. Each week we study two days, only four to five hours. So that in between days break, least disturbance to your work, 
and we do assignments, studies, etc. in between, just like a university or global university that's done. Again, this is based on a survey. And as the customers, you, my customers asked it and I did it, it's online. If required, physical can be arranged, but this one is online. And who should be attending this? A long list, program managers, project managers. This slide is very helpful according to me. Why should you do this? Anyone? Business analysts, solution architects, bid managers, senior management. I have written something in the middle column, but the last two columns are common for all, which I would like to read. Sales, business development managers should be attending this. Customer relationship managers, because there is delivery excellence. Quality managers, commercial managers, Vendor managers, each of these activities have a project. Who manages vendors? Who purchases, makes procurements? So finance also. Quality department has a program. Sales department has a program. So wherever there is a project program, all of them can be attending this. Why? To bridge the existing skills gap, enhance personal resilience, enhance the organizational resilience and to achieve organizational goals, which are top line and bottom line by delivering excellently to the customers. Top outcomes, according to me, is that you become riper. You already are ripe, but I'll make you riper. We stand for redeployable in these challenging times we discussed in the beginning of the webinar. You become incrementable, you become promotable, employable, and retainable. In these challenging times, when we looked at the great resignation and the great retrenchment, CEOs are looking for increasing businesses, adding new businesses, but nothing comes through in this world. There are challenges. The whole world has been going through the economic crisis also. Then this being riper is very important. One of the meaning of the riper is being riper is being more advanced in development, quality, and maturity. That's what is on offer. Quickly, working sheet Excel will be shared with you. Case study, sample reading material, five BCG case studies, and recording of the session on my YouTube channel. This is where I would like to stop. Mm, I've gone a minute over already, but I want to take this feedback quickly. And you can type it in the chat box, please. Your option A, B, C. No need to type a lot. Full option. You can just write A, B, C. Was this discussion useful? The session useful? Yes, thanks. Thanks. And if you would like to know full details of the course, you can say no also if you really felt so. No offense. No one is perfect. I look forward to doing better in the next session. So I'm requesting and expecting in the chat box, you can write your feedback to this poll three. A, B, or C is enough. My coordinates in front of you. I'll wait for a few seconds and while the time is over, I'm here if you want to stay. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions. But before that, thank you very much. If someone wants to log out, one request, if you want to switch on cameras, I would like to take a picture also. If you all can switch on camera, I would like to take a picture also. I'll wait for a few seconds if cameras are coming up. Yes, thanks, Amol. Anuj, I'll wait for a few seconds for you. All right, give me the best smiles, please. I would like to go ahead. Thank you very much. And then time for questions. If anyone wishes to have any questions, I'm here. So no questions as of now. No right. questions as of now. Okay. Uh, picture didn't come. Hold on, please. Let me take it once again. Hold on. Sure, sir. Once again, best smiles, please. I don't know. Something new is happening today. I'm taking screen dumping. It's not taking it.
no challenge. I'll take it from the recording. Then. Yeah, some something new. Maybe a new version of Zoom has come up. Right. Yes. Who was speaking? No question, but some suggestion input. I'm ready. Yes. No questions. Any suggestions inputs? Okay. Sir, I that would be very audacious on my part. No, no. Uh, but no, no. Uh, as I said, see, uh, sir, we uh, understand this topic to a certain extent, not fully. Resilience is a very big topic, and yes. as far as I am concerned, though I am a pretty decently veteran in this field, I <laughs> still feel like you that it, I have not even touched the tip of the iceberg. So to make comments at this point would not be right. No, it's okay. It's okay. But I, I, I look forward to even if later something comes to sure. mind, I'll be happy to make note of that. Sure. Great. Thanks. So uh, we are over time. Yes, yes. We'll close the session. Thank you very much All for right. logging in. And we'll Thank stay you. in touch. I'll keep in bringing more to you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you. the day. Thank you.